SQL is demon spawn and no self-respecting software developer should ever use it. This is a blog post by Robert Martin that refers to SQL as Demon Spawn and suggests that we should stop using it altogether. Now, SQL has been around since the 70s, and most websites on the internet today use a SQL database to store some data. Yet, SQL injection attacks have been one of the most common hacking techniques for the past 20 years. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to perform some SQL injection attacks on a website that I've built. And most importantly, we're going to learn how to protect our sites against SQL injection attacks. So here I have my site that shows us data about Oscar winners. If you enter a name into the form, it shows any nominees and any winners of Oscar awards. This site is taking the data from the form, sending it to a server. That server is then making a SQL query that it sends to the database to get the data back so it can be presented in the web page. I've built this app in JavaScript using Node and a different version using PHP so that we can see the difference between the two. So here is the JavaScript version of the app. The name gets sent from the client to the server where this SQL query is constructed before it's then sent to the database. The interesting part of the query is right here where we compare the name that was passed in by the user to the names of the actors in the database. And the way I'm doing this is I'm just injecting that name that comes from the form here. So if I enter Sam here, this would just be Sam right here. So it's gonna search for any actor with the name Sam in the database. And on this screen here, I can even see what the query is actually gonna come out as. So this is interesting because basically the user that is using the website right here has complete control over this part of the query. So of course, if you just enter names in, that's no problem, I can just search for actors. But if I were to input something else, for example, some SQL, that would just get injected into the middle of the query, and this is where the vulnerabilities lie. So let's start with some pretty innocent SQL injection, and I'm gonna write the SQL in here, and then I'll explain it in a second. So I'm gonna do a single quote, then a space, then or one equals one, uh, and then dash dash space. And that showed me every single actor in the database. And if I look at this screen, so this is all part of the query that I didn't write. This is what just exists on the server. And this is the part that I did write. And what's happening here is I have this single quote at the beginning that will end the like part of the query. And now I can just start writing any SQL that I want because everything that was in that string has now ended. So what I've done is extended the where clause to show an actor with any name or where one equals one. So this will just show a list of every single actor that exists in the database. And then this dash dash here is a comment in SQL. So what I'm trying to do is just comment out the rest of the line. I've, I don't want any of, of this stuff to appear in my statement. And I can see that this works. This shows every single actor to me. So I know that this form is vulnerable to SQL injection. So let's pretend I'm a hacker and I figured out that I can type in some SQL in here and it will get executed in the query. The first thing I wanna do is try and figure out what kind of data I can get from the database. Because what I care about is finding interesting data about users, maybe their passwords, maybe their credit card numbers, or maybe some other kind of data that I could try and sell on the dark web. So I want to try and figure out how to query as much data as I can from this database. The current query is displaying the award, the year, and the name of the actor. And really what I want to do is just try and piggyback on that query so that let's say users' passwords and credit card numbers just appear on this screen like this. And the way I'm gonna do that is with a union statement. So we'll end the current like operator, then type union, and then this allows me to start selecting things from anywhere in the database. And I don't really know what I'm selecting yet, but I'm just trying to figure out how the query works. 
So with a union, I have to select the exact number of columns that are already being selected from the database. So here I can guess that it's probably three columns. So I'm just gonna type in one, two, three, just try a select statement with three columns and then comment out the rest of the line. If this works, I should see one, two, three show up and there I do one, two, three. Um, if for example, I'd guessed wrong and I thought maybe uh, four columns were being selected, maybe I thought the ID was being selected as well, then this wouldn't work, the query failed, and I'm not seeing anything on the front end here. So I know that I can type union and then create some sort of select statement where I'm selecting three columns and that will return me data about the current database. So using the select statement, I first wanna figure out which tables exist in the database because then I know which data I'm gonna try and target. So to save time, I have some of the queries pre-written. These will all work with a MySQL database, but you can do equivalents for different types of SQL databases. So this statement will show me any table names for the current database that's being used for this site. Uh, and I need to make sure that I have three columns. So I'm just gonna make one, two, and table name. So there we go. So I can see that in this database, I'm just gonna ignore the one and the two. In this database, it's a really simple database. There's just awards and actors. Uh, so in a normal relational database, obviously you'd have way more tables and you probably wanna just get some data about a single table. But in this case, cause it's really simple and I only have two tables, I'm just gonna select every column from every table that exists in this database. So here's the query for that. It's just a select statement that gets the table name and column name from every table that exists in the database. Um, so I'm gonna put that in here. I've got to Close off the like union. And then I gotta make sure I got three columns. So I'll just add that extra column there. And then at the end, gotta comment out the rest. Okay, so here's my awards, here's my actors, and here's all the columns that actually appear in those tables. So in my awards, I got basic stuff. I got a year, a winner ID, uh, the title of the award and the ID. And then for the actors, I have the ID, the full name, and each actor's credit card number. So that's an interesting piece of information I might wanna try and get from this database. So my first thing now, okay, well, let's just try and select the credit card number from actors, and this is gonna be a pretty easy one. Uh, so union select uh, credit card number uh, from actors. And I gotta make sure I have three columns here, so I might just include the full name and the ID of the actor, why not? Okay, so now at the bottom of the query, I can see the ID of the actor, the actor's name, and the actor's credit card number. So I now have all the credit card details from each of the actors just by using a couple of basic queries that only work because this site is vulnerable to SQL injection. So at this point, it should be really obvious how big of a deal this is just by exploiting a simple vulnerability that you might have in your application, I can access pretty much any data I want out of your website. Of course, these credit card numbers are fake, but you might have real data in your site that someone might be able to attack. For anyone that has seen the story of Little Bobby Tables, is probably wondering if I can do something like this, where I end the query completely and then just try and drop the table. So I'm gonna show you in my Node application what this might look like. So I'll end the query, semicolon, completely done, and then start a completely new SQL statement that will drop table, and I know one of the table names is actors, so I'll just try and drop that table. Hit enter, and I don't get anything back, which might be expected from the database. Uh, so let's just do a quick search. Um, okay, so it didn't actually drop that table. Um, and if I were to check my database, I would see my tables are intact. And the reason this didn't happen is because the library that I'm using, the Node.js MySQL library, doesn't allow you to run multiple statements in the same query. So in the documentation, you can see right here, support for multiple statements is disabled for security reasons. It allows for SQL injection attacks if values are not properly escaped. So the library that I'm using and the default library to use for MySQL in a Node.js application does help a little bit with SQL injection attacks. So people can steal all of your data, but they can't drop your database, um, which I guess is nice. Uh, now this upsets some people. I've gone to a lecture before 
gotten up in front of students and tried to do a SQL injection attack this way where I drop the table, do the multiple statements, and it doesn't work and I get upset and I just have to tell people, trust me, SQL injection is a thing. So for anyone that does really want to hack a site like this, where little bobby tables will in fact work, um, we can switch from the Node application to a standard PHP application. Now, here's the same exact app, but using PHP. So I can enter names uh, and the SQL injection works. That should work, yeah, there's all the actors. The difference here is that because I'm using PHP, I'm using what I'm pretty sure is the standard framework for connecting to databases, which is PDO, which stands for PHP Data Objects. Now, I don't know as much about PDO as I do about other libraries, but when I first tried a SQL injection attack like this on my PHP application, it worked straight away. So my assumption is that the PDO framework allows for multiple statements to be executed in the same query to the database. Uh, so I don't want to drop my tables because then that would end this right here, but I'm going to show you something that I could do. So given that I already know there's an actors table and I already know the columns within the actors table, I could maybe start inserting some custom data. And this is probably a more strategic move here because if I drop the databases, well, someone knows I've done something, they just restore from the backups and my work doesn't really do much except disrupt for a, a little while. But if I can inject myself or some data into the database, maybe I can become some sort of admin user or, or something like that. So, uh, okay, I'm gonna end the query. And then I'm going to start a new query, which is insert into actors. Uh, we're just going to insert the full name. Um, just insert myself. Okay. So I entered that. Nothing seemed to happen. Still seemed to return the same stuff. Uh, but let's see. If I now try and get all of the actors, we should see. Am I at the bottom? Yeah, there we go. I am now an actor in the database. Um, so that's interesting. Maybe I think that I deserved to be the winner of the actor in a leading role 2015. So maybe I'm going to change the winner ID here from Leo's to be my ID. Uh, so two things here. I first need to, actually I'll just do this in a union. I first need to select the ID uh, and I guess full name um, three from actors where name equals Sam Meech Ward. Let's see, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's not name, it's full name, and I gotta rewrite that whole thing. No, I don't, I just have to update it here because it's a get request. Full name, there we go. So it looks like the ID from the row I just inserted is 1304, so now let's uh, update uh, awards set um, winner ID equals that, where uh, I guess title equals actor in a leading role, and year, no wait, year equals, I want this one, 2015. Okay, so it would have gotten the data and then updated the data. So this will be the old data. So if I now just do a basic search, um, there we go. Uh, let's see, right there, there we go. So now I am the winner of the actor in a leading role for the 2015 awards. Uh, so this is a little bit more interesting. If the database is this vulnerable, you can just start going in and messing with the data as you please. You could do a big thing like drop table actors, right? Um, but that I think is much less fun than giving yourself the award for the actor in the leading role 2015. So the answer is to use prepared statements, which work pretty much the same way in most libraries. And here I have my unsafe SQL injection query. And underneath it, I have my safe version, which uses a prepared statement. 
So in the first version, I'm just dumping the data straight into the query as plain text. And in this safe version, I'm putting in a little question mark. And what this means is that this query that I've written by hand, and this is all written by me, the developer, this gets sent to the database completely separate from the data. So here's this safe bit of SQL query that I've written. I'm going to send that off to the MySQL database. Separately, I'm going to send off some parameters. Now here's the name that came in from the malicious user, the hacker. This comes in and it gets sent off to the MySQL database completely separately from the query. And then the database can make sure that any data coming in here is sanitized and doesn't actually get executed as a SQL statement. And then it can put that data into the query wherever is needed. And this, I think, is currently the best solution to SQL injection attacks. So make sure you're always using prepared statements. And more importantly, just make sure that if the data is coming from somewhere else, from a user, from a different part of the application, from a library even, that it should be treated as if it were malicious. So don't trust that this is ever going to be safe. Treat it as if it's always going to be some sort of attack and make sure that it is either sanitized or used in a prepared statement like this. So that's it for this video on SQL injection. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.